Hi ladies. I hope you're all comfortable and cozy and uh, would like to talk about meal prepping with me. I have some suggestions, but I would love to hear from you on what you're doing for your meal prepping. So once we go to the grocery store and bring it all home, to me, if I don't take care of it, then it sits in the vegetable bin or the fruit bin. So best thing for me to do, and hopefully this will help you also, is when I shop, make sure that I have time when I come home to do some meal prepping. And if you're still working, you might even do more meal prepping than I do because you're getting home later from work and you don't want to stop out at the fast food. You want to know that when you get home, oh, I have this ready and that ready. And all I got to do is throw it in the toaster oven or the microwave or the oven while you're unwinding and you'll have a nice healthy meal uh, when you get home. So one of the things that I discovered I think it was a couple weeks ago, I had gotten some boneless, skinless chicken strips. Usually I get the breast, but they only had the strips this time. So I brought them home and I actually cooked them in, um, of course, coconut oil. I, I'm using coconut oil on pretty much everything. So I browned them in some coconut oil and then I put them in the refrigerator and if, because I don't snack, we're not supposed to snack because we're not babies, but yeah, sometimes we have a snack. But guess what? Since I need protein, when I needed a snack, usually I go to the nuts, um, I actually went to the refrigerator and I had some dipping sauces that I had made that are um, sugarless and just made from fresh fruit and stuff like that. So I was able to pull out these chicken strips and zap them for a couple minutes to warm them up. One day I even ate them cold because I was so hot from being outside, came in and just grabbed a couple chicken strips and got extra protein for that day and didn't ruin what I was working for on staying fit and fueled. So not only you can do this with chicken, I'm sure you can make beef strips if you, um, Think you need a snack at least they're done and ready in the fridge and then of course I had them for dinner on my salads so they were all cooked and ready to go so every night when I came home and wanted a salad I didn't have to cook the chicken it was all done so that's one way and you can and I'm sure you can do this with chicken breast and make strips your, yourself with them so remember to do that, cook your meat ahead of time, two or three days ahead of time, and have it ready for you. Um, when you come home with those groceries, of course, you wanna wash your veggies and get them prepped and in their container so they stay fresh because I don't know about you, but I have all these good intentions on making nice salads and go out and buy all these ingredients, nice and fresh veggies. And then I bring them home, throw them in the veggie bin or the, in the fridge. And, you know, a few days later, it's like, oh, I have radishes in there. It's like, yeah, I did have radishes in there. So if I bring them home, prep them, then they're in the actual refrigerator. So when I open the door, I see these veggies. Then I know they're all ready for me to go and it's easy. I don't have to do anything but grab them, throw them on the salad, and throw the chicken on the salad, and I'm good to go. So, and have fun with them. I, I know radishes, you can cut, I think you cut like a cross in them and put them in ice water, and they'll flower, I call it flower, they'll poof out like a flower. So if you, you know, just a simple little thing to decorate your veggies, um, to make them more, because you eat with your eyes. So why not have fun with it and uh, be creative? You know, we may not all have all the time in the world to do meal prepping, but a little bit goes a long way. I'm really serious, it does. 
So that's your veggies. And then of course, wash your fruit and have it ready to go. And again, I don't eat a lot of fruit. I know I'm not telling you not to do that, especially if you've been told by doctors to eat more fruit. That's between you and them. I personally don't eat as much fruit as I used to. I thought it was good for me and it was almost like a sweet dessert because a lot of fruit is, is sweet. So you substitute that, you're thinking that it's better for you, which it is, it's better for you than a candy bar or you know something else. But in my studies, and you can do your own research, please do, don't quote me, we all know fruit is natural sugar. Well, and we think it's good for us and healthy for us, and it is better. I'm not debating that. However, it is sugar, and your body takes it in as sugar. And if you watch your body after eating fruit, your blood sugar spikes, and you're ready to go and move on and groove and do all kinds of stuff. And then all of a sudden you crash and then you want more and more. So I limit my fruit and not even once a day, you know, sometimes I'll have an apple for three or four days in a row. I just have that craving or the urge and I think I have to have an apple. And that's mainly my go-to fruit. I will have lemon and limes in my drinks or my shake. Uh, I don't put fruit in my smoothies anymore like I used to. There's a lot of recipes out there that you that I do use and it says optional fruit, blueberries and stuff like that. And yes, they are good for you. Just make sure, you know, it's a fourth of a cup or, you know, just a handful, but in the palm of your hand, not like this. So, all foods are good for us. Uh, we all know that in moderation, same as fruit. So if you are buying fruit, you know, have it washed and ready to go. So when you open that fridge, you see it. And that's something that you'll go to versus the bag of chips and stuff that you weren't supposed to buy anyways at the store. But if you have the stuff in the refrigerator, you'll go to that. I'm hoping, or I know you will, you will, you will. Um, oh, I know Instapots are uh, very popular these days, and I know you can throw like a whole frozen chicken in there and it's done in 20 minutes or something like that. And that's great if you have those and you can use that. And just be mindful, you know, are there sauces in there that you're putting in this meat or is it just cooking dry? I don't have an actual Instapot. I have something like it, but, um, you know, watch the recipes. How many cream sauces are you putting in there? Or are you just putting in the whole chicken breast or the roast or, you know, whatever you're making. So that's another way to do easy meal prep. Having, having that taken 20, 30 minutes, if you can wait that long. Sometimes when I come home from work, it's like, I gotta eat now. I don't wanna wait a minute. So I run to the fridge, everything's right there, throw it all in a salad and add the meat and off to the table I can go. So watch for that. And you know, there's so much talk about how we should have meals together sitting at the table. And I think that's great if you can do that with your spouse or, you know, if you're living with adult children or um, even younger children, you all, we all wanna get together and hear about each other's day and, and things like that. But I just wanna caution you. I feel if I have to sit at a table with somebody who's eating something that I know I shouldn't have, and I don't really want to have, but it's so tempting why I'm sitting there, it's hard to say no. So no, I'm not advocating for you to run in the closet and eat and 
not be with people. That's not what I'm saying. But just be mindful of who you're eating with, what they're eating versus what you're eating. And you can train your family to eat better if they see you doing it. And just, I don't know how easy to say this, that, you know, I want to eat at three o'clock if my husband wants to eat at six. So why am I forced or why is he forced to eat at a different time that he doesn't want to? Doesn't mean that we're not communicating, that we're not having that time together, but why does it have to be over a meal? I just don't get that. If you have younger children, yes, you're sitting at the table with them, but hopefully you're training the younger children to eat the proper way, to get fueled the proper way, so they're eating what you're eating. So I'm kind of talking about older adults that can have their own food and can sit and, uh, you, you know, communicate at a different time over coffee in the morning versus over your meals when you want to eat something different than they do. And until you can get past that craving part where you can sit next to somebody that's eating biscuits and gravy and you're having a smoothie, you know, there will come a time where you can do that and you'll be so proud of yourself and make sure you reward yourself when you get to that point. And then there's days that you can't and you know that your cravings are high that day. So why subject yourself to sit next to somebody who's eating something that you want or you used to eat and you know you can't? Well, we can't, we can't eat that, but we just, we shouldn't. We're trying not to. And of course, if you have your smoothie and they're having biscuits and gravy, and you just insist on sitting there, that's fine. But remember, a bite is all you should need or want with that smoothie or with your Fab Four breakfast. And a bite, I mean a bite. Don't say I, I'll take half of um, the biscuit. No, you'll take a teaspoon, you'll take a bite, just a taste. All your body needs is a taste. All your mind needs is a taste to know that you had biscuits and gravy or whatever else it is, that you had a taste of it and you can stop. Continue on with your Fab Four, whether it's the smoothie or you know the actual meal. It's just remember, train your mind and your body will follow. Your mind knows that you had biscuits and gravy. Your body knows that it was only a bite, a taste. And if you're not there yet where that's all you can, you gotta leave the room. You gotta talk to your spouse, your roommates, whoever you are with that around meal times, you need to talk to them ahead of time and let them know that while you're starting out, or even if you've been doing this for a year and you're having a rough day and, and being around that food would just trigger you, don't subject yourself to be there and be triggered. You know, it's your body, it's your mind. You have a right to have meals when you need them and when you don't and communicate with your family around around that and I guarantee you know if you make your meals eye appealing they're going to want what you have because you're going to be enjoying it they're, you're going to be happier uh, healthier of course but you're going to be happier because you're healthier you're going to have more energy they're going to want it so they're going to want to have what you have so don't be afraid to have your meals in front of them. And if you're cooking for everybody, fine. Don't make that high carb, high sugar meal. If it's your night to cook or if you're cooking, this is what you're making. 
And if they want to eat it, they're big boys, big girls, whoever you're living with. They can either eat it with you and share it and enjoy it, or they don't have to. They can do their own thing. We're all adults, but you're on a journey and we are here to support you. So reach out to us and your family members will see the change in you, I promise you, and they're gonna get on board with you. You just have to start and show them that you mean business. So get it going, get your shopping done, get your prep work done so that it's easy for you to walk into the house or get up in the morning and start eating right away with the first meal of the day, either your shake. Now remember, shakes can be made the night before. I do this quite often. I don't blend it the night before, but I certainly throw everything in there, even the greens, the water, whatever you're putting in there. I put it in my shake mixer thing, whichever one I have, Nutribullet, I think. I'm not promoting them and put it in the fridge in the morning when I get up, even if I get up late or I'm rushed or I feel grumpy or whatever, all I have to do is go to my refrigerator, grab that container out of the fridge, put it on the machine, blend it up, and I have my breakfast. No excuse. I don't have to worry about someone else having biscuits and gravy. I don't know why I'm stuck on biscuits and gravy. Um, or bacon and eggs and I wasn't supposed to have them today or whatever it is, you got your shake and you're out the door. And if that shake, I keep reminding you, if your protein shake does not sustain you for four to six hours after you drank it, then you need to look at what you are putting in it because it's not the Fab Four that's gonna keep you going for four to six hours with no snacking. I mean, I'm serious, there's no snacking. So you have your shake in the morning and you're ready to go to lunchtime and you've already done your meal prep. So you have your lettuce in there and all your veggies in there and you already have your cooked meats in there and, or, or cheeses. I mean, cheeses, I'm staying away from a lot of dairy, but yes, you can have, you have to have what you what you need, not what I need, but just know what's going with on with your body. So lunchtime, everything's ready. You go in there, you just put it all on a plate. Uh, and at the table you go, there you go. If you're having dinner, now I try to do a shake in the evening, especially in the summertime. In the wintertime, it kind of gets hit and miss, but in the summertime, a shake at night after my walk is just so refreshing. So again, I prep that at lunchtime and get my walk on in the evening and come back, blend that up. And sometimes I'll even blend it up before I go for my walk. And uh, depending on where I'm taking my walk, if I'm doing it away from home, I'll take my shake with me. So after my walk, I get in the car, I can sit and relax, have my shake, even read a book and enjoy my dinner, you know, out in nature. So, and if you're not having a shake at dinner, that's fine. You still have all your, you know, everything prepped. So whatever you didn't have for lunch, you're gonna have for dinner. So I just encourage you to please think about meal prep. And if you have a buddy that you're grocery shopping with, I think that's awesome. Let me know how that's working for you you both go home, you prep it together, you each take whatever, you know, however you're working it out. I think that's great, but try to grocery shop and give yourself time afterwards to do meal prepping because it is a huge blessing to have that food ready to go when you need it and you're not stopping at those fast foods or uh, even for a healthy salad or something someplace. So make sure you get your meal prep on. I think you'll really enjoy it and you'll see how easy it is 
and please let me know how it's going. I'd love to hear if you have different meal prep ideas, how they are going for you, what you're doing, and how you're eating your meals, and how that's working out with you if you're doing it alone. I don't like, I'm not, eating alone isn't that bad. I, I you know, you can read, and of course eating slower is better for you. So you take a bite, you you know, read a couple chapters or whatever, take another bite, read, read some more chapters, um, or, you know, you're doing other things or you're, you can still communicate by, you know, you're having a meal alone. It's not that devastating because you're working what your body needs when your body needs it. So just be careful of, when you eat, where you eat, what you eat, who you eat it with, and enjoy this journey. Because remember, we are a team. There are plenty of us that are just like you that need to get fit and fueled. I do, uh, the team does, and we need to do it together because there's much more power in community than just trying to do it on your own and knowing what other women are doing at our mature age so that we can get our fit and fuel on is really exciting. So ladies, thanks. Get your grocery shopping done and get your meal prep done. And I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.